Okay, my name's Guy Jones and I'm going to show you today how to use Reagent Tests UK's solid reagent tests. Reagent tests are legal chemicals that are used for testing of drugs and chemical substances. They're really quite easy to use and once you've done it once or twice it's something you can do within a few minutes. The first thing to consider is the safety considerations. So reagent tests are corrosive and that means that we do need to take some care and some precautions when using them. If they get onto your skin and they're left on the skin for a few minutes then they will cause minor chemical burns. So if they do get on your skin then they need to be rinsed off with uh, fresh water in a prompt and calm way. There's no need to panic but it's something that you shouldn't wait to do. The area that you're testing in needs to be prepared before you start so put some paper down on the table just to protect the surface because the reagent tests will stain the surface if they touch it. The area needs to be fairly well lit so that you can see the colour changes from the reagents and you'll need a white ceramic testing surface. The reason for this is because it's chemically resistant and it's very easy to clean. Once you have cleaned it with hot soapy water it also needs drying thoroughly because water will interfere with the tests. You'll need a knife, a sharp knife to scrape your sample with and you'll also need a beaker of water handy to put any waste into. The reagents while certainly hazardous are significantly neutralized by putting into water. You absolutely wouldn't be able to drink it but if you then get that water on your skin, it's not a concern and it can be rinsed off at your convenience. Finally, you'll also need the micro scoops that come with the kit and a sample that you want to know more about the identity of and, of course, the reagents themselves. It's always important to use more than one reagent and I'll come on to why that is in a few minutes. Okay, so the process of testing the sample then. The first thing that you need to do is have a read through your instructions in full so you're familiar with the process before you start. This is really, really valuable and it will help you get the best results on your first try. So through this video, I'm just going to be following the instructions. So the first step is to use your blade to take a sample of the substance. What you ideally want to have is a small flattened pile so that the maximum surface area of the substance is going to be in contact with the reagents. You really need a very small amount of substance. There's no need to waste it and the colour changes can be very intense so there's no need to use large amounts. In some cases using too much can actually make the test harder to read because all of the incoming light is absorbed and it just appears black. You don't see the colour nuances that appear. If you've got any chunks or crystals, then they need to be crushed into a fine powder. Then take your reagent bottle and give it a really good shake. And this helps to settle and distribute any of the chemicals inside that have settled so that it's going to be nice and even. And then after you've done that, you need to tap the bottle firmly on a hard surface so that the crystals inside will settle and they're not going to fall out when you and be stuck to the lid when you take the lid off. So, And it really does take a fairly firm tap to do this. I will save your ears from me hammering while I'm making this video. Once we've done that, we can open the reagent bottle and you'll see that my insufficient tapping has left a lot of the crystals around the lid. So we now just need to take some of the reagent by pushing the scoop that's provided into the bottle and giving it a little bit of a twist. And we've now got our portion of granules which we can tap out Once we've got the granules on the substance, it's good to flatten them to make a thinner layer so that we can more easily see the colour change that is occurring at the boundary 
of the test granules and the substance. And then once we've done that, we can put the lid back on the bottle to prevent oxygen and moisture degrading the reagents. This is unlikely to be a significant concern. It also helps to avoid mixing up the lids. Now, once we're finished with the microscopes, it's really important that we should not reuse these until they have been washed and dried thoroughly. So if they're put back into the reagent bottle after touching the substance or into the substance container after touching the reagents, they will contaminate it. So I'm going to dispose of this into my beaker of water. Now we can already see that there's a color change starting to occur here. And the color change can typically take between 15 seconds and four minutes. So it's really important to be patient and just wait to see how the color develops. We're looking at the first color change. So if there are subsequent color changes after that first one has occurred, we should ignore them. The reason for this is that oxygen and moisture in the air can cause subsequent color changes. So I'm looking at this and I'm starting to see a sort of pale brown to orange color change. Orange is probably a bit of a stretch, to be honest. It's brown. So looking down the chart, we've used the Mecca reagent for this test. And following down here, we see that we've got a possibility of ibuprofen, of mescaline, or of modafinil. And so just by doing this one test, we've got three possible options that are on this chart. We have failed to eliminate all of the possibilities, and there's still considerable uncertainty here. So what we need to do now is to run a second test to try and find more information about this sample. So I'm going to take my Lieberman reagent now. The reagents that you use will depend on what substance you're testing, what you're expecting to find, but generally you can use most of the reagents for most substances because they're reacting with various different parts of the molecule to give a colour change. And so we get colour changes for most substances. Even if there is no colour change, that can give us really useful information because if, for example, we were testing amphetamine and we tested with the Mecca reagent and saw a vibrant colour change of any sort, we would know there is something else present because we would be expecting no colour change. So any of the reagents can be useful. So we're going to take our second reagent now, give it a shake per the instructions, and then tap firmly to settle the contents of the bottle. I open that bottle, and using a fresh, clean microscope, I push in, twist, to extract some of the granules, and then tap and then flatten that layer of granules. And in this case, we're seeing a really fast, kind of reddish brown color emerging. So with the Liebman reagent, we've got this reddish brown color. And with the Mecca reagent, we've got this light brown color. And we've got our three possibilities here from the Mecca reagent. We're now going to compare that to the possibilities for the Lieberman reagent. So let's work upwards. Modafinil would give us a darkening orange colour change. And we can see that that's not a darkening orange colour change. And therefore, this is not modafinil. Mescaline with the Lieberman reagent would give us a black colour change. So although it matches with this first Mecca reagent going brown, it doesn't match the second reagent, and therefore we can say with confidence this is not mescaline. Ibuprofen gives us a dark reddish-brown colour change, and so that does match with the expectation. So the only substance that matches both, and it must match both, is ibuprofen. And given the context of what we know about the sample, 
That makes a lot of sense. It's in tablet form and I bought it from the supermarket. The context is valuable information in a more general sense because it helps us to understand a bit more about the kind of market forces that might be influencing what's been put into this substance. It's really important to note that reagent tests cannot guarantee that a substance is safe. In fact, there's no such thing as a safe substance. The only safe way to use drugs is to not consume them at all. If somebody is going to use drugs, then the way to approach it is to take multiple measures to reduce the risk that they're exposed to. Just like somebody driving a car doesn't only rely on their seatbelt, they also use the brakes and they consider the speed that they're travelling at. A person who's using drugs needs to test the substance to make sure it's the correct substance. And they also need to take care about the amount that they're consuming, any interactions it might have, any mindset that they might be in that's going to influence the mindset during that experience. And it's only by doing all of these things that we can reduce the risk to the minimum level possible. Even then, it would still not be safe. So that's how to use the solid reagent tests. If you've got any questions, please do contact us. We're always really happy to help people use the tests and to interpret their results. Thanks ever so much.